If you have your Bibles in, go with me to the book of Matthew, through 25, verse 14 through 27. As it reads, it is also like a man. Going off on an extended trip, he called his servants together and, and delegated responsibilities to one he had. To one he gave five thousand dollars, to another two thousand, and to a third one one thousand, depending on their abilities. Then he left. Right, right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. His second did the same. But the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. Verse 19 reads, And after a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. So the one which he given $5,000 showed him that he had doubled his investment, which means he made 10000 And his master commanded him, well, speaking to him, saying uh, in response to his work that he put in, he said, good work, th that you did your job well. From now on, be my partner. Verse 22 continues, it said, the servant with the 2000 showed how he also had doubled his master investments, which means he doubled it to 4,000. And his masters commanded him by speaking to him, saying, uh, good work, you did your job well. From now on, be my partner. The verse 24 continues, said the servant, which he given 1,000, said, master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hid hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. And the master was furious. And he responded by saying, that's, that's a ter terrible way to live. It is cr it's credible to live cautiously like that. So if you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? So the least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers, where at least I would have gotten a little interest. And so we hear, um, you know, a master giving his servants, I want to say, uh, their own portions of according to their abilities, as the scripture says. And so. As this master was, well, how this goes is Jesus was telling a story. And so this is one of the stories he told. He was telling about the master giving his three servants these gifts, uh, which this translation referred to it as, as money. So the the important part I want you to get from this is, is not the money. The part I want you to get is the part that 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 we need to understand that when when God gives us something um it could be something that we want it could be something that that he know that we're able to carry that we're able to manage very well and so he gives it to us because he entrusts us with those things and so when he entrusts us with those things he's expecting you know for you to yeah, at least double what you, you know, what he have given to you. Um, as the 
you know, as as the as the first two have done, uh, well, what that symbolizes is, you know, is uh, yeah, accountability, and so one of the stewardshipness things, one of the most crucial parts of being a steward is you have to understand your your accountability inside of this whole thing. Because um yeah you have to know you know what you have inside of your hands and you have to know how to use what is in your hand what is in your hands. And so if you do do not know what is in your hands and how to use what is in your hands you're not going, going to understand the power that that you have and so there are so many people that that are in this world like the like the third servant who's just too nervous to do anything because they feel like they don't you know we can pair up you know like like you know just because they receive more than me or just because this person have more connections than I did or just because this person have a college degree or just because this person have, I want to say, uh, uh, references on their resume. So that's how they got that job. You know, that's how they got there, you know. And so yeah, instead of them understanding the the talent that they that they possess themselves, that their talent that even though it may look tiny, that even though it may look small, it is a big it is a huge deal. So um here so here with the last servant was referring to, you know, or he said, Oh, uh I don't want to, you know, do anything with it. And the reason why I wanted to point this out, Blast, is because yeah, I do really, really want you to understand here that yeah, you shouldn't be afraid with to with to use what the Lord gave you. Um, and I, and I do specifically mean that if if you know the Lord gave you a talent to sing, you know, and and if it's you know, uh, I want to say world of music, then you do that according to to what God has given you the talent and the ability to. And so I've known personally so many you know musicians that have you know decided to sing gospel just because they think. That, that they're doing a godly thing. But in honest respect, no, like when the Lord gives you a certain gift and he gave it to you in that way, he expected for you to use it in that exact way. And so it is a purpose why he designed each of us a particular way. You know, if, you know, uh, and so if you, if you would think about everyone, you know, you have everyone look like, like me, if everyone dressed like me, if everyone talked like me, and everyone walked like me, if they all preached and, and did everything like me, then you wouldn't be able to distinguish the real Henry from the fake ones. And so, you know, one of the things that I want, want to make very point here, which is why I'm explaining it like this, because I need you to understand that your accountability, you know, of, of who you are rides on you using on you being you exactly who God created you to be. So then that's how come with people who know me, uh, you know, even though if you look like me or you talk like me, walk like me, whatever, but the people who really know the real me know, you know, oh, Henry don't dress like that. Oh, Henry don't speak like that. He don't, you know, uh, uh, walk like that. He definitely don't talk like that. He definitely don't, you know, minister like that. He definitely don't do music like that. And so, you know, everyone who actually knows me, they knows me for who I am and for, for, I, I won't want to uh, use this very loosely, but for what I do, you know, does not make me who I am, you know, but it actually gives the, the character of, of who I am. So in other words, I, I can change my character anytime I want. So, However, however, but for me to know, you know, how important that that is to me, to also to other people that is around me, you know, just like the same with like these servants, the first and two servants understood who, who they were. They knew what they 
strengths was, what their weaknesses was. And so therefore they didn't go and take their money and go and invest in something where they know that they don't have a real gift at doing. And so, you know, they stick with what they knew and they invested in that and, you know, money came back. But the last man, he, he decided he, he wanted it's because because he, he was looking at his masters, I wanna say at expectation. So he, you know, looked at, at, at the pressures of, you know, what if, you know, I don't measure up and and I just want you to, to be able to have the faith in knowing that you will have the faith you that you will uh measure up according to how God wants you to measure up. And so that there, there are a lot of times in my life where I preach sermons where I thought I was a complete, you know, babbling buffoon. And but the people who heard the sermon uh, you know, said to me, Oh my god, that was the most powerful word that you ever preach preach. And I'm just like like what? Like that's the most terrible word that, that I ever gave. You know, yeah, I feel like I needed to go go back and re and re practice that some more. Yeah, before I actually you know did that, but but even but they even just go to show even when you even put forth that little effort that the Holy Spirit will do the rest for you and he he will make it come out the way it, it, it was intended to come out. Your gift was intended to come out. And so therefore it can still touch and, and and enlighten other people in the way and how he wanted to touch and enlighten other people. So that's why it is important for you to not not to dig your your talent and just put it in the you know graveyard and say, you know, um yeah, forget it. You know. Uh matter of fact, no, I think I heard Will Smith quote someone when he said that the richest Place place on earth is not the not the uh, treasure uh, department. It's not the banks. It's not you know all these other you know high main places where you normally will find diamonds and gold and all that. That the most richest place in the world is the graveyard because there are thousands of ideas that have never been birthed and you know that could have been worth millions or or billions or trillions. And we don't even know. And, you know, and, and so, you know, um, no, I just wanted to, you know, uh, uh, give some word that, that occurred in word. Uh, when you are given a responsibility, would you please make sure that you understand that you are accountable for it? Um, all right. So, uh, account accountability means that you are, that you are obligated to explain justify and take responsible for one's actions and to answer to someone such as a person with more authority. Uh, uh, accountability is often used in the context of individuals taking responsibility for their actions. So it is also often transparent. And, and to say, and also wrote down here, say accountability means someone who is accountable is completely responsible for what they do and must be able to give a satisfactory reason for it. Said, so, okay, so one of the things about the, about the last serving here, now I have wanted to to say about that, um, yeah, accepting uh, uh, accountability is, is the quickest way with to mature, uh, not by aging or, or your age or by how much, you know, uh, I want to say experience or years that you put in to something. So your accountability is a measure by that, your accountability well, well, your quickest way to reach, to to reach accountability, um, uh, is is through um, uh, your maturing. So that's what accountability is. Accountability is what allows people to tell you. Well, allows people to 
show you that you are um you're mature. Right? So and so so don't expect to get results until you learn how to become how how to overcome yourself. Oh, that's another one. Don't 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 expect you to get results uh, until you learn how to overcome yourself. So just like like the last servant, how he couldn't get over himself, and that's the reason why he couldn't use his talents. Well, that's the same thing. So don't expect to to get. I want to say uh, don't don't expect to get results until you overcome you, you yourself, and. And also, I wanted the last note I wanted to add here that you are first accountable. We are first accountable to ourselves before we are accountable for others. As I'm going to speak into your life, the sevenfold blessings, uh, the sevenfold blessings, it speaks, I speak uh, blessings of one, health for you and your family. N number two, de deliverance from any habits. That you have in your life. Number three, peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Uh, number four, salvation to any friends hurting, lonely, bereaved, or confused. Number six, finances, debt cancellation, prosperity, economic empowerment to all of God's people. According to his riches and glory. And number seven, the I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your assignment to move forward in your purpose.